Hello, it's Pixel Weekly, and I'm back again to do my first ever re-review of the Dell Inspiron 15 3558. The reason I'm doing a re-review is because it's been around a year since I've gotten the laptop, and I've wanted to revisit it. Because a lot of opinions and performance results have changed since the last time. The Dell Inspiron 15 3558 is a 300 USD budget laptop, powered by an Intel Core i3. Seems almost too good to be true, right? A sub 400 USD machine using an i3? But we'll see exactly in this review where this computer falls short. So let's get started. And hardware is where we're visiting first. The Dell Inspiron 15 3558 has a very plasticky and cheap feeling build. The base of this laptop is fairly sturdy, but the screen portion is a bit flimsy. Even the bezels of the screen feel very flimsy. The screen portion is sturdy enough to where it won't flex too much if you put pressure on it, but it is nowhere near up to par in my opinion. But what can you expect for 280 to 300 USD? There is absolutely no visible metal on this laptop, literally only plastic. While it doesn't feel terrible, it doesn't necessarily make you confident in the build. I haven't had any problems yet, so I guess I'm just paranoid. I don't even know if the screen is glass, it might be just be plastic. Speaking of the screen, it's a fairly subpar 15.5 inch 1366 by 768 LCD display. Colors aren't horrible, but they do seem a bit bland, viewing angles also kinda suck. While things don't look incredible, for 300 USD you really aren't giving up much here. To give perspective, for the same price you can get an Acer 14 inch Chromebook, a laptop with much worse specs, albeit a better screen. Moving up from the screen we have an awful, I guess I should say cheap webcam. While it's still better than some webcams, <clears throat> it's nowhere near the promised 720p resolution. At least it doesn't look like it. The camera is extremely grainy and very bland when it comes to color accuracy. Again, we have to remember it's only 300 USD, so it's not bad for the price. So far, it might sound like I've just been bashing this laptop, but I do still really love it. It's just the 300 USD price tag does show. I'm trying to be very realistic with everyone. I don't want to paint up this laptop just so when you buy it, you'll be completely disappointed. Don't get me wrong, this is a great laptop for only 300 USD. Now let's move on to the keyboard. It is like any normal laptop keyboard. It doesn't have a great amount of travel, but it isn't too mushy. It's pretty clicky, and also, Dell says it's spill resistant, and I can vouch for that. I was working on a video a few months ago when I tipped my glass over onto the keyboard. I cleaned the mess up and it still works flawlessly. Something that doesn't work as flawlessly is the trackpad. It tracks well, but when you want to right click, it almost always registers the right click as a left click. It is so annoying. It doesn't sound too bad, but it is one of the most frustrating things on this planet when it just keeps on happening. A wireless mouse is a must have with this laptop. Now let's move on to speakers. They aren't great, they aren't terrible. They're very average. They're downward facing, so that's not good. They, they don't have great bass, but they de get decently loud, and to the average ear they sound okay. There really isn't much else to say about them. They're very average. Next, the battery life. The battery life isn't too bad, you can usually get around 5 hours of work out of this thing before it needs a charge. But the standby time isn't the best. If left on, it can usually last around 2 days without use before it completely dies, from a full charge. This is standby, the screen is closed, and the PC isn't doing any hard work, and it dies in at max 2 days. I suggest keeping a charger handy if you're going on a day trip, going to class, or traveling. Now the IOs. The Dell Inspiron 15 has one USB 3.0 port, along with two USB 2.0 ports. So far, having only three USB ports isn't too bad. It's enough to have a mouse, a microphone, and a thumb drive all plugged in at once. And for the average student, you won't normally need more than three USB ports for school. It also has an HDMI out, an SD card port, an Ethernet port, a headphone jack, and an optical drive. All these ports give plenty of versatility, so no matter what situation you're in, you'll be prepared. Next, specs. So I said it has a Core i3, a dual core Intel i3 clocked at 2.1 GHz. To be more precise, it has an Intel Core i3-5015U, a lower end i3. You shouldn't really game on this laptop, but it is good for average web usage, and even a slight bit of video editing. By no means is it ideal for editing, but it's surprisingly good at it. Most you can really game on this laptop is CSGO, but anything can run CSGO. The funny thing is though, the, it isn't the best at running Team Fortress 2. It's playable, but there are a lot of dropped frames, and it gets a bit laggy. Oh, and it can play Minecraft, but again, what can't play Minecraft? For everyday usage, this i3 is great. It has 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM, which is perfectly fine for everyday web surfing, and even good for some multitasking. But after around a year of usage, my PC has gotten 15 times slower. It opens windows slower, it loads videos slower, it does basically everything slower than it used to. And I think it's because of the RAM. 
I've downloaded more programs, and I use more programs, so the RAM has to work a little harder to keep everything in check. It has no dedicated graphics, so that's just another reason to forget about gaming altogether. Finally, the hard drive. It's okay, just like the speakers. It's one terabyte, and it's, it's plenty of storage for me. There really isn't much to say about it. It's not a speed demon, but it doesn't take half an hour to download a song. I often forget about the hard drive, so that's a good sign. It runs at 5400 RPM, so like I said, very average. Now for some miscellaneous things. It has a Bluetooth 4.0, it's around 1 inch thick, it's able to power another monitor without taking a hit to performance, and has AC Wi-Fi. Not bad for a 300 USD laptop. Overall, this laptop is a pretty good deal, especially for college students. It offers decent performance without costing a month's worth of food. This laptop will probably last another year without issue, but it is slowing down a bit. I will use this until the end of its life, which hopefully won't come soon now that I've said that. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay tuned for more Pixel Weekly.